Okay. Um, the notes that I'm going to post for you today are on Lewis structures. Okay. So what better day to have throwback Thursday, no Tuesday, throwback Tuesday, than to do a throwback to Lewis structures, which all of you learned last year. All right. Um, just a couple of reminders. And I realized there might be a couple of people who didn't have me last year, went to different schools. So I'm going to um, explain this just quickly. Okay, remember the octet rule? Um, elements want to be like the noble gases because the noble gases have the S2P6 valence electron configuration, which means that they have eight valence electrons uh, in their out, valence means in their outer energy level, okay? So in terms of bonding, all other elements are bonding in an attempt to get eight valence electrons like the noble gases have, okay? Uh, covalent bonds, which is what we're gonna focus on today, uh, are when elements share electrons as a way to achieve eight valence electrons. So typically it's non-metals, okay? Uh, because all non-metals are looking to gain for the most part, because that's the easiest way to get eight. Like they usually have four or more. Um, and so because they're looking to gain electrons, then it's easier for them to share when they're bonded to other nonmetals. okay? So because of this, um, molecular compounds are held together with covalent bonds, okay? And if you recall, we draw Lewis structures to show how the electrons are shared between atoms, okay? So I'm gonna um, do an example with fluorine, which as you know, is a diatomic molecule. Um, depending on where I am on the screen, it, see, if I stand closer to the screen, it gets brighter. Um, okay, so we're gonna look at that. So as you know, fluorine has seven valence electrons because it's a halogen, okay? Uh, its configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p5, just real quick. So it has seven valence electrons, right? Okay, so each one has seven. There are two fluorine, so there's 14 total, okay? This is how an F2 molecule is bonded, okay? This line right here represents a shared pair of electrons. The dots represent unshared pairs, okay? Just so you know, in your book, sometimes um, the dots are referred to as lone pairs or non-bonding pairs, okay? So that might be another way you see this, like it might be called non-bonding pairs or non-bonding electrons, because they're dots. And the shared pairs are called bonding pairs also. And this is where the covalent bond happens is at that line, okay? All right, so just gonna run through the rules and these notes will all be available. I'm gonna erase that real quick. Nope, never mind. I'm not, hold on. I think I can erase it, yep. Uh, okay, so these notes are gonna be available to you on Squilogy, okay? Uh, so hopefully you pulled those up before you started watching, but just to review, to draw Lewis structures, and we're going to go through a couple of examples, you need to determine the total number of valence electrons in the, in the molecule, okay? So for each atom, you have to account for the valence electrons. Step two, the least electronegative atom usually goes in the center. That is typically the element that is found on the left side of the formula, okay? Usually it's on the left side because it's less electronegative. Remember, electronegativity is an atom's ability to attract electrons to itself when in a molecule. So very specifically, um, it has to do with like when an atom is bonding with another atom, okay? which one has the better ability to attract an electron to itself, okay? Step three, connect uh, other atoms, the central atom with a shared pair of electrons, in other words, a line. 
place remaining electrons around the outer atoms in as unshared pairs until each atom has a total of eight valence electrons when you add up dots and lines, okay? If you have any electrons left over, those will go on the central atom. And you need to double check that each atom is meeting the octet rule. The big exception is hydrogen, because remember, hydrogen likes to be like helium. Helium only has two valence electrons. And so as a result, hydrogen's only gonna have one line, okay? Um, there will never be any dots on hydrogen. It'll just be a line. So, you know, if hydrogen's on the left, you'll see a line coming off to the right. If hydrogen's on the right, you'll see a line coming off to the left. That's the only way that hydrogen can look. There are never going to be any dots on hydrogen. Okay. All right. So let's go through a couple of examples real quick. Okay. Example one, CF4. I'll do this one for you um, if you need a refresher. So the first step is to count valence electrons, okay? Carbon has four valence electrons. Each fluorine has seven, and there are four fluorines, so you need to multiply that by four. That's a total of 32 valence electrons. Don't skip that first step. Usually when people get these wrong, it's because they made a mistake in that first step, okay? Steps two and three I like to combine. You need to figure out who goes in the center. In this case, it's carbon. Carbon is definitely less electronegative than fluorine. Fluorine or carbon is also on the left side of the formula, which is your big clue. So then we're going to attach the four fluorines using single solid lines. Okay. So I've now used eight electrons total, two for each line, okay? So two, four, six, eight. So out of the original 32, I've used eight, I'm down to 24 total, okay? Now I'm gonna take advantage of uh, notability here by copying this, I think. Let's see, did I do this correctly? Yep, I'm gonna copy. And I'm going to paste it here, okay, a little over to the right. Because the next step, which is step four, I kind of made these a little smaller, I guess. I'll shrink it. That way we have more room, okay. Um, the next step, which is step four, is to put dots on the outer atoms, okay? So I have 24 left. Each fluorine has a line right now. They each want eight total. So keep in mind, you're going to do two, four, six. That gives this fluorine eight, right? Two for the line, four, six, eight. I'm going to change my pen size to get a little bigger because that makes this go faster. Okay. Same thing on the left-hand fluorine. Two, four, six. Same thing on the bottom fluorine. Two, four, six. Same thing on the right fluorine, two, four, six, okay? If you, and I'm just gonna make these other ones a little neater here, cause that's bugging me. If you look, I just used 24 electrons, right? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, which means out of the original uh, 24 that I had, I used them all, I'm down to zero, which means I don't need to do a step five because there are no additional electrons that are left to go on the central atom. And that's good because chlorine has eight itself because it has four bonded pairs, okay? All right, what I'd like you to do is pause the video now and try NF3 on your own. And then I will help you, I will show you how to do it in a second. Hopefully you had a chance to try NF3. If not, uh, again, I would recommend you pause this and try it on your own first. Okay, but just to look at it, nitrogen has five valence electrons. Each fluorine has seven or three fluorines. So that's gonna be a total of 26 electrons. I'm gonna speed this example up a little because we don't have to go as slowly as we did with CF4. Okay, you're gonna put N in the middle, fluorine on the right, fluorine on the left,
exploring down at the bottom. I've used two, four, six total. I have 20 more to go. I'm gonna start using the outer atoms. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So remember, I said we had, I used six for the lines. I'm at 20. I just used 18 on the outer atoms. I have two electrons left, and that's good because nitrogen only has six and it needs eight. So those two electrons are going to go on nitrogen. That gives everybody uh, what they need to satisfy the octet rule. And that's how that goes. All right. Um, I'm going to skip ASBR3. All right. Now, for polyatomic ions, okay, the charge has to, uh, or the charge has to come into play here. So when there's a charge and that charge is negative, for example, that means that that polyatomic has additional electrons. If the charge is positive, like in the case of ammonium, then that means it's missing an electron that you would expect it to have. Okay, so let's look at how you would do a polyatomic ion. BrO3 minus, okay, bromine has seven, oxygen has six each, there's three of those. And then this ne extra negative charge here, you guys, means you need to add an additional electron. So that gives us a total of 26, okay, because seven plus 18 plus one is 26. All right, and you're gonna put bromine in the middle. So bromine, okay, because it's on the left of the formula. Um, and it is less electronegative than oxygen. So you're gonna attach your oxygens, okay? That's two, four, six. Okay, I think you can see this is probably gonna look a lot like the NF3 example we did, right? Eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, okay? So I just accounted for all my electrons. Here's the one other way that polyatomic ions are different. You have to put a bracket around it and put the charge on the outside. So when you draw that Lewis structure, you have to draw it in a way that indicates that that charge was there, okay? So for polyatomic 